Hello friends, welcome to Squared Plans. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to be doing a setup video of my holiday section here in my catch-all Franken planner. So last year I did a full planner for my holiday setup, which was awesome. I really enjoyed this planner. However, I do prefer to have everything in one place and I just find having two planners you know, splits my attention and doesn't really work for me functionally as a plan of attack. So um, I will be keeping this setup as more of a, um, a storage setup for my planner materials that are holiday related. And then I'm just going to set up the section for 2022 in my catch all today. It is a little early to be doing a full planner refresh as far as holiday theming. Uh, it's still very much fall, doing this video right here at the beginning of November. So I will save that part of the video for a later date, kind of when we get closer to the holiday season. And so this one's just going to be mainly focused on what I'm using for my holiday planner, um, just kind of getting it into my planner so I can start you know, planning for all those Black Friday deals and Cyber Monday stuff that's coming up and, uh, you know, gift giving, all that good stuff. Okay, so that is the plan for today. So let's go ahead and get started. I have pre-printed out the holiday planner I will be using this year, which is my own holiday planner that I set up. I actually have two versions in my shop. There is one that is just a seasonal planner with a bluer theme. So I think that might work well for people who maybe don't celebrate Christmas or even any holidays at all, but maybe have other uh, traditions and things they'd like to do around winter. I do have a planner kind of more seasonally focused that has a lot of the same information, just more seasonal instead of holiday related as far as like Christmas holiday. So I have that in there, but I really like the red and green, you know, kind of theme out planner myself. So I will be using this one. I have printed the pages that I needed. I didn't need all of the pages in this planner. So some of them will not be, be shown here, but I'll do a quick flip through of what I did print. And if you want to see the full planner, there is a uh, mock-up on my Etsy shop and you can see all of the pages that are in included. Okay, so here is the cover page. So you get a cover and then you also get an inside cover, which I changed up this year, just kind of more of a red theme with a watercolor background of those same leaves from the front. And then I've moved pages around as well. So my first set of pages here is going to be the holiday fun pages and then the seasonal bucket list pages. I did that back to back. I also have the monthly pages set up. So I printed out, it goes all the way back to September. So if you got this early, you could have been planning way back in September, but I didn't do a September, October. This is gonna start off here in November, December, and I also included January this year. And I think this will be helpful for those longer holiday extension vacations, you know, that kind of creep into early January. So I do have some things probably that might do that. So I wanted to have that ready to go. And then this is also a new page this year. It is a holiday checklist and it's just a simple, you know, check off list that you could repeat anywhere in your planner where you feel like you need more, um, you know, just list laundry list of things to do. I just need this one. I think we're not super busy around the holidays, so this should be enough for me. Next, we have the seasonal event guide, which I had included in years past, and I found it very helpful. I did this planner around the time of COVID, so I didn't really have as much seasonal things to add in, but now things are starting to come back, and a lot of the traditional things we used to do are now going to be available this year. So excited to fill this out and kind of get back to more of those seasonal events. And I did that one front and back since, yeah, we do a number of them, but that gives you space for 10 items that you can track and, you know, kind of keep up with. And then I have this holiday card list, which is basically just a place to keep track of like Christmas cards, 
where you might be sending them, who you might be sending them to, and if the card was either returned, meaning like, you could use this either way. You could say, did the card come back to you? Like if their address is no longer valid, or you could say, did they return a holiday card to me? And that, if you're trying to weed out your list of people who you want to do holiday cards to, that could also be helpful. So I have that. I have one from last year too. I need to fill these out. I actually had one from way, way back and I still haven't quite transferred it into my holiday planner, but I do plan to do that. I also have this handmade Christmas project sheet, which I think I did front and back, yeah. So last year I used it to mock up my Christmas cards. And that was really nice just to kind of get a plan of attack and what materials I would need to make my Christmas cards. I also have used it for like food gifts, like jar gifts or things like that. So it's a good sheet to have for that kind of project, like things that you were making around the holidays specifically. There's also this gift giving list, which I think every holiday planner probably has. This one, I've just kind of mapped it out by name and then you can get some ideas where you're gonna get it from and then how much it costs. So it's really nice. You purchased it and get like a total for how much you spent on that one person. So just a nice sheet. I don't need more than one, but if you need extras, like if you have a lot of people on your list, you can always print extras of those. This is the one that I really wanted to get started, you know, because I'm starting to see all these Black Friday sales start to pop up. So this sheet is specifically for Black Friday shopping. And then it used to be a little bit more straightforward where, you know, you knew if you were going to a brick and mortar, what the store hours are going to be for the Black Friday sale and then, you know, the coupons and all that. Now they're having early Black Friday and early, early Black Friday <laughs> and everybody has different things. So it is kind of nice that you can compartmentalize and keep track of different stores or you could probably do the same store and their different Black Friday offerings during the certain times in November. That's also another way you could use it. And again, because it's printable, you can print as many as you need. So I have that, I'll figure out how I'm gonna need it. I just printed one for now, but we'll see. I might need to print a couple of extra. And then Cyber Monday, same thing, online sales and deals. So I have that, and then the last page here is just like a holiday notes page. I went ahead and printed that in case I need to jot down some notes or brainstorm some ideas. Have that, and then the back of my planner, inside cover and back cover. So this is the main planner I'm gonna be using for 2022, but I do have another planner that I'll be inserting here as well, so let me get that. So I'll also be inserting more pages from the Kiki K Christmas planner from last year. I did this as well in my planner setup last year when I did the uh, individual planner. I did the planner and dividers and so many things you know, related to this planner in particular, but now I think I'm just going to print out the individual pages that I used and really felt like I connected with. So some things that came up last year, people asking me questions about, I wanted to address too. So this Kiki K planner comes in an A5 setup and it's also um, two up on a page. So it actually comes like with page and a page like this set up. So if you are an A5 planner, it's super easy because you can just either fold it in half or cut it in half and stick it in your A5 sheet. But if you're not, it takes a lot of maneuvering to get it to a different size. And it's really kind of tricky because it is set up to, you know, two up. So if you wanted to print just one page, it's kind of hard. I was able to do this because I set up a template last year and made a huge, um, you know, it, it took a while to kind of set it up, but made it so it was a custom classic size planner layout. Last year I didn't feel comfortable giving that out because this is not my planner, but I really just didn't want to recreate these pages myself because there's a lot of, you know, text and writing and guidance. It's more of a guided planner. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what advice to give you guys if you do want that Kiki K planner. 
I mean, the best thing I could say is maybe bring it up on a PDF if you don't know how to do the manipulation part that I did on my side. And you could do screenshots of the pages and then print those individually. Quality might not be as good, but it might be a way for you to at least get the page individualized first and then print it at scale, depending on what size planner you're trying to print. And that could just be a little bit of trial and error. You figure out what scale, if you need to scale it up or down or drop it into like a Word document and move it up and down if that's what you use to manipulate things on your computer. So those are my tips or advice that I would suggest to anybody who really doesn't have a clue on how to convert that planner into a size that might work for them. But the way I did it, because I create planners, I have templates and things that I could drag and drop and move things around and, and resize things, and that's what I did for this. There is, I think, like a hundred and something odd pages in that planner, and I really only took just the bare minimum of things that I needed. I have this Random Acts of Kindness page, which I just thought was a nice page to have in there as a reminder of the things to do for the season. I also... Uh, printed the back side of that, which is just a list of, you know, individual random acts of kindness that I might want to do on my own. It also has the what are you grateful for page, and I liked that, you know, kind of list out things that you're grateful for in the season. Again, more space on the back. And then these pages I really found useful last year. So there's this November page, which kind of gets you started on things that you should be thinking about in November to prepare you for the holiday. So I really liked this checklist and I wanted to include it again this year. And then it has like a to-do list here and some pre-filled out items. Same with December, similar setup and some to-do lists on the back. A new year, so this is for the January basically setup and, and what you should be doing in January. and some to-dos here on the back as well for January. So I thought those would be nicely nestled in with my um, months. And then we have this Stay Connected, which I thought was nice for, basically for Christmas cards and how I plan to connect with family and friends over this holiday. There's a Christmas cards kind of setup sheet. I went ahead and printed that out. Just some like check off lists for preparing Christmas cards. Same with gift giving. And here you can kind of see some of the challenges that you're gonna have, because this one was right up next to a, a pink background page. I almost um, didn't cover this, and I missed this one, but the rest I covered. So yeah, so it's a little bit tricky to get these pages to fit um, what you want them to fit. So like I said, there's this to-do on the back, which I really like. Again, just for getting ready for gifts and, you know, just the whole preparation of gift giving. And finally, the reflection section, which is one of the main reasons why I did this last year, was just the time to, to really look back at the year and, you know, just evaluate how your year went, how the season went, and then make plans for the future. I think they call this, yeah, dream, then do. So those are the pages that I grabbed from that Kiki K. And this was the 2001 Christmas planner, which I'll link below. She came out with her planner kind of late last year. So I, again, I'm like a, a year behind each year, but she does usually offer like a 2022 planner. Just, I think it comes out mid November or around November. Yeah, so I already pre-printed all this out and have it all ready to go, but it's from the 2021 holiday planner she did. So these pages will be nestled together. Let me go ahead and cut them um, and I'll show you the process. I've made some notes here at the top. So for my planner, I decided to print it at 85%. I think I recommend 84 or maybe even 82 on my on the printable as far as scaling it up but that's just to ensure you'll be able to see everything. But I like it printed a little bit wide so that I get like a full flush border on some of the pages. So 
that's what I'll be using on this one. And then this one, like I said, I customize it so I have the crop marks in there ready to go to chop these down. So in case you have never seen me cut down my printables, this is the process that I usually take. The ones that are built to size will include the crop marks like you saw here. So you can just print one page per sheet and then use the crop marks to cut it down. The scalable ones do not have crop marks because it has to be able to scale up and down depending on the size of your planner. So I'm gonna grab, let's say three pages, maybe. Yeah, let's start with three pages and then we'll move forward from there. This one has a nice big border, so I'm just gonna start with the front page as my guide. And I like to start by lining up the first page and I can see that, I know that it's gonna be seven inches wide, so I'm going to estimate where I'm gonna crop off each side. Trying to center it. There's plenty of margin, so that should be fine too. I also know it's going to be nine and a quarter, so I'll do a little bit of overlap here, top and bottom. And again, I like to turn it clockwise as I go, so the straight side is always butted up against the top here. And I'm just going to push this into the seven. Use that as my marker. Just make sure the pages are all flush. And then do my trim. Oops, come with me. And I'm just holding up this blade with my shoulder in case you can't see that. I know some people are like, what are you doing? That's dangerous. That up there. And try. Okay, so the first pages are done. Let's take a look at how they look. Looks good. The bottom is a little bit showing there. But otherwise, everything is pretty well lined up. Okay, let's do another couple pages here. And I'll speed through the rest of this process so you guys don't have to wait for me to do it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and punch it with my Happy Planner Punch. It will do only about two sheets at a time, so this will take me a minute, and I'll again speed through this. Okay, so here is the cut and punched planner that I'll be putting here into my catch-all. So I'm gonna grab that. And I think where I wanna place this is in my schedule section. So I have three tabs here at the front. Actually, I have four total, but three tabs here at the front. And after my goals comes my section, um, my schedules, excuse me, section. And I have a dashboard here for my little fall setup. You haven't seen that. And then it goes to my future log. Maybe I will put it behind my future log, but before I get into my faith stuff. Yeah, that's a good idea. So this is where I'm gonna place it in my planner. And I'm gonna start out by just placing all of my uh, Christmas holiday planner here in first, and then I'm gonna weed in these individual pages from the Kiki K planner. So let me do that and get about this many in at a time. And then for the first page, like I said, I have this holiday fun. I think what I wanna do is put in the random acts of kindness here. I'll probably do again my acts of kindness advent calendar here, like I did last year. And you can see, I'll link that video below so you can see that setup. So I have that, we'll go Grateful, I think I'll do grateful right after that too. And then we'll get into the fun. We've got the holiday fun and bucket list here at the front. And then we've got November. So what I think I'm gonna do is put this guy in the front of November. Okay. 
then we have the November page. Then we have December. I think I'm going to put December here and then I'll put January behind that. Kind of break up the page there. We've got that. And then, um, yeah, yeah, I think that'll work. Yeah, so it has like new year and all that information. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like that. So this will be like the calendar section. And then we're going to get into like what's going on during the season, seasonal guide. Then I think the stay connected might be good right before the holiday section, holiday card section. And then we'll put in the Christmas card page. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Gift giving. Drop this in right in front. There we go. Gift giving, gift giving list. It's all of this shopping stuff here. And then we'll do the reflection here at the back. Let me just have the notes and that. Okay, I think that's gonna be it. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a quick perusal in my um, my last year's holiday planner just to see what I need. I'm also gonna grab out this dashboard, which will be set right here. I'm gonna put it right where November is. Yeah, so that I make sure that I check that. And so you can see from last year, coming this out of the way, that I had uh, individual dividers for the sections. Um, but again, I feel like I don't need all of that now. I'm just going to do this section. I mainly reference the monthly, and then if I need to go to the other pages, I can just go to them individually. I don't need to look at them on a daily basis. So I have that and then I can always store them here behind the dividers as I go or I haven't quite decided yet. I kind of like having the planners for each year together as one. So that's kind of what I've been doing there. Um, and I also still had a lot of extra pages from an old happy planner um, set I had. This guy with like recipes and things. I think if I need them, I'll pull them out, but I should be fine, I think this year with just what I have. Um, I have a recipe planner you know, organizer so that you know I like to keep everything together for that kind of stuff in that planner that's food related and things like that so overall it should be this should be enough and we will see how it goes but I like I said I'm gonna put in this divider so I can easily flip to it and I will be revamping the entire planner eventually with my holiday setup. I'll be, you know, refreshing the covers and everything like that and everything will be brand new and shiny for the holidays. But I feel like it's a little too early to get to that part of it yet. But since I needed to get into this planner right away, I wanted to get this in. So really that's it, you guys. I just want to kind of show you my process this year for setting up my holiday planner, which will be my holiday section in my planner. And that's basically it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Also too, go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch and think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Bye.